In the last movie, we created our first Ruby on Rails application, and without doing any configuration to it at all, we're already going to be able to access the project through the browser. Let's see how to do that. So when we left off before, I had already navigated my command line into the application itself, simple underscore CMS. And I also have it open here in a finder window just so we can see the actual folders. These are the same things in both of these. They're alphabetized a little differently because of the way one of them alphabetizes capital letters, but it's the same contents. Now, in order to see this, we have to launch the web server, right? Now, we're not using Apache, even though that's installed already, or IIS, or anything that might already be installed. What we're going to be using is the one that comes with Rails, which is WebBrick. So to launch WebBrick, what I'm going to do is come over here to the command line and type Rails again, space, server. So that's a magic word that goes after Rails to say launch the server. Now we could also type Rails space S for short, and it'll do the same thing. So Rails server or Rails S. I'm going to go ahead and type out server this time. In the future, I'll probably just do S. So it's going to launch. It says, all right, booting WebBrick gives me some information about the fact that it's all starting up and everything. And now it's sitting waiting. And it's just going to listen. And it's going to listen on port 3000. That's important. Okay, We'll come back to see that in a second. But it's listening on port 3000. And when requests come in, it's going to display them in this command line window. Right? I don't have control over this window again. It didn't give me a prompt back again. It still got control. This dash D says that it would be willing to detach this. Typically, you don't want to detach it. What you would just do is open up another terminal window if you needed to be able to work and move around and do other stuff. So a lot of times, you'll have two windows open, one that's actually running your web server inside the command line. So now that it's listening on port 3000, how do we get there? How do we talk to it since it's listening to us? All right, we go to our browser. I'm going to be using Firefox. And what we say is localhost. All right, that's going to say use this computer, localhost, colon, 3000. So it means talk to my computer on port 3000. That's the web address that I'm going to be using. Now, let's hit return and see what we get. Now, before we talk about what's in the window there, I also just want to tell you that localhost is an alias for the IP address 127. Dot zero, dot zero, dot one. And that works as well. So if you have any problems using localhost, 127.0.0.1 is the same thing. It basically is a standard for this computer that I'm on right now. So however you get there, what we get is a Welcome to Ruby on Rails page. Now this page is one good way to make sure that you have everything installed and up and running. And we can actually click About Your Applications Environment, and it'll give us a list of all the things that are installed and running. So if you're having problems and you need to troubleshoot your installation, this is a good first place to come. Now, it goes ahead and tells us how we can get started. I'm going to actually walk you through those steps a little later on. But this page is also useful because we can search the Ruby on Rails site. It has links to the Ruby on Rails website, the weblog, the wiki. We can browse the documentation. This is a very key page, Rails API. We'll be looking at that later. The Ruby standard library, Ruby core, and Rails guides. Those are all good resources for you to use. So take a look at those, browse through them when you have time, bookmark them. They're all right here on this page, though. If you ever need them again, you just generate a new application. You can see them. So we're going to be talking a lot more about the structure of our Rails application. But I want to go ahead and just show you where this page lives. It lives in a folder called public. When we open that up, there's a file in here called index.html. And we'll come back and work with it again later. But I just want you to see it now and know that's where this file is that gets generated. Now, next up, we're going to actually create our first bit of our own code because we don't want to see the code that's pre-programmed in there. We want to see our own code. But before we do, I just want to show you that the way to stop the web server is given to us right here. It says Control c to shut down the server. So hold down Control and hit C and it will exit the server. So now the server is no longer running. And if I try and go to that same page, it's not listening anymore on port 3000. There's nothing listening there. So we have to have that on and listening. And if we do, then the Rails application will respond to us. And that's all there is to being able to access our project.